Are we back now? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not sure where I uh, where I finished, but so I'll just begin. So again, I think design is a very important catalyst in innovative thinking. And I think this is what we need if we're to help people understand the threat of antimicrobial resistance. So the first thing we did in the IDAPS project, for example, was to do a, a baseline survey. This was undertaken by, by Rosemary. And we just wanted to get a very small indication of what was relevant in the local community in, in Reading. So we wanted to know why people visited the pharmacy and what kind of information source that they thought would be helpful. I mean, this was, was very much just uh, trying to uh, get some very basic understanding of what was going on in the pharmacy. We asked people what they thought about space in the pharmacy that we were, pharmacies that they were used to, to dealing with. And this was just very much to give us background information. We also carried out uh, hierarchical task analysis to find out how people use spaces within the pharmacy. This um, is the floor plan of the pharmacy that we're working in and it's a relatively large pharmacy. But it's quite important we thought to find out how people use the space, how they move through the space and what they thought about when they were in the space. So we captured some comments, um, some conversations that uh, that people had in in various bits of the pharmacy um, and we were particularly interested in spaces where people had to sit around and wait for example um, we then decided and this is following the model in architecture to run a competition to try and get some innovative solutions to how we could use this space and how we could move forward with some ideas. So we made a call for cross-disciplinary teams that had to include a pharmacist um, and a designer and, and architect or interior design. We put out a call, long story short, we selected five teams from that call. They, each of them were cross-disciplinary in different ways. Some of them were university teams, others were, were, for example, Public Health England. So we had a really rich resource. And the idea was that our teams would come to a two-day ideas lab to learn about uh, the project itself and to start thinking about about their ideas and I've just got a little film here if it works that just gives you a little bit of ideas to the kind of thing that we did in the ideas lab so a little bit of explanation to start with these are the questions that people had to deal with and we got them into a room lots of discussion lots of interaction I'm sure many of you have been involved in similar workshops the inevitable post-it note and we were keen to engage with pharmacy users who came in and spoke to the design team speaking to some patient reps brainstorming having a designer involved from the very beginning has been really interesting also engage your clientele clientele from very small age to adults from the research and clinical arena into another world where i can i have to think of other ways and means of translating the message so i think when you have people of different skills and different backgrounds yeah, you're bringing yeah, together. yeah it's actually the the input from the team here that have shown us the site but also i think really importantly the pharmacists themselves uh, very informative and yeah, motivated. Collaborative collaboration. Truly multidisciplinary. Intensive. And each team had to keep preparing, the, pre presenting their, their work and getting ideas from the rest of the group. 
Um, so there's lots of iteration and, and sharing, which was very, very positive in the two days that we spent together. It's been really interesting seeing how they yesterday were responding to the pharmacists and, and visiting the, the pharmacy and, and having to think about a real space because they're not getting a blank sheet of paper. They're actually getting a fully functioning community pharmacy. Mm. It's, and I think what we intended from the start to sort of focus on different kinds of design, architectural design, information design, human factors, mm. bringing them all together at the start of the project to provide the sort of mix that's going to or has just seems to be producing some really innovative solutions to and here are some of the solutions um, we had five um, amazing solutions very very different um, this one was from a group that um, introduced principles of mindfulness and the idea was that the community pharmacy would be a place where people would sit and relax and, and, and reflect and listen to information about antimicrobial resistance on headphones and listen to music and so on. This approach was rather more infographic led, um, trying to point out differences between self-care, pharmacist support and medical advice. Um, another approach that was suggesting a campaign about linking different parts of the pharmacy to a particular issue. So um, cystitis, for example, um, would be sort of flagged up around the store as to where you could get information about it. And at the bottom there, the Woodley Warrior, where young kids were invited to stick stickers to show that they'd done certain activities within the pharmacy and so on. We had a team presenting uh, um, the idea of some persuaders that would have different AMR stories and um, another group that presented AMR stories on a set of rotating cubes. We decided the project team and some others chose not one but two winners and we took the two winning solutions forward to prototype um, uh, as, as full-size prototypes for installation in the pharmacy and the rotating cubes was one of the, the winning solutions and here, here is a, a picture the idea is that the cubes rotate and you align the colors and you get a, a three store a three screen a three square story about a particular issue um, this is it installed in the pharmacy and the idea was that the, the lower down cubes uh, uh, had stories relevant to children and younger people and the more adult related content was on the higher up cubes. This solution also had the, the idea of a barometer that indicated and showed, showed how anti, antibiotic prescriptions went down in a particular month or period of time drawing on national data sets. The second winning solution was the, the Persuaders and the campaign Beat Bad Bugs. And this was full size figures that had different messages according to their, their age um, and, and, and situation. And here's just a few slides that show, a few pictures that show the, the, uh, the figures in the pharmacy and the related leaflets and, and, and materials that uh, the pharmacists and pharmacy staff could talk with customers and patients about. Um, we're still uh, evaluating the outcomes of this um, this this work. It's, it's a very small survey in, in just one pharmacy but it's indicating that using touch points throughout a pharmacy is, is, is very helpful and useful for uh, information positioning. Um, our feedback suggests that explaining components of a campaign are very helpful. And a, a, a very important one is that pharmacy workers are very busy and they need to not have to worry about uh, working on, on a campaign. If there are stickers and flyers to use, they need to be at points of use and so on. Um, and I think one of the things from the information design perspective is that we don't, it wasn't helpful to have too much text. It's important to keep messages very short and in bite sized chunks. Um, and I think, although in theory we knew this, in practice the messages had to be even shorter than we thought. And this kind of feedback is, is, is really 
helpful. Other thing that helped in the Woodley Pharmacy, this is the Woodley Pharmacy in Reading, is that uh, referring to the locality or characters that the local community would be familiar with was something that um, our, our recipients thought was very um, useful um, and uh, a motivator to engage. The, this particular campaign, the Beat Bad Bugs campaign, was um, noted by the Commonwealth Pharmacists Association and they thought that this work might have relevance in Rwanda. So again, cutting a, a long story short, uh, we decided to go ahead working with the, the CPA and some organisations in Rwanda to come up with another project to use the same sorts of techniques and methods in Rwanda. So we were joined by academics from the University of Rwanda and colleagues from the uh, Rwanda Community Pharmacists Union. And for this project, I mean, we were again very keen to work in partnership to think about ways of using community pharmacies in Rwanda as places to raise awareness of antibiotic resistance. So we did a number of things. First, it was important to find out what the AMR and antimicrobial stewardship situation was in Rwanda because it's going to be very different to that in the UK. So we did some survey work um, in those areas. And then we ran some workshops in Rwanda, in Kigali, with pharmacists from that city and the idea was to find out more about how they worked and to get their ideas for the kinds of message that they thought would be relevant to get across. So uh, lots of work, lots of writing, again the inevitable post-it notes, but getting, making sure that we were, were aware of and understood their ideas and issues that were important. And some of the highlighted issues were, were very different to those in the UK. In, in Rwanda, for example, there's lots of branded antibiotics and um, patients are often very keen to have a particular brand rather than a, a generic kind. And there are cost implications there, of course. We also um, went out to a local community in a, in a village, um, on the outskirts of Kigali to talk with local communities again to find out what they would find helpful in their interactions with pharmacists when they felt ill or needed um, uh, drugs prescribed. So here are some examples in a schoolroom um, discussion about actually terminology because one of the things that came up in our, our workshops is that bugs isn't a a well used word or well understood word in Rwanda. So we changed the name. It's now Beat Bad Microbes, which is perhaps not quite as alliterative and snappy, but much more relevant for the Rwandan situation. Another workshop, and if you look at the image on the right, you'll see some green things. This is the first iteration of a set of materials that we produced as a result of our first visit to Kigali. This is the second one where we took our materials and asked for feedback. We went round to visit pharmacies as well, so here we are looking at the, the materials. Um, and then as a result of that we went back and produced a new set of materials. Um, and I'll just talk through some of the materials that are now currently being reviewed in Kigali. One of the uh, items that the Rwandan pharmacists and local community thought, thought would be helpful was an antibiotic record card um, so that um, antibiotic prescribed drugs could be written down and side effects could be recorded if there were any. Uh, the pack also included uh, some leaflets and some posters and I'll just go through those now in a little more detail. So 
for the study in Kigali and it's a small a small study we wanted to test this out in in pharmacies um, so we prepared a pack um, of the materials the materials were printed in the UK and we had um, English on one side and Kenya Rwanda the local language on the other side to help with accessibility in an ideal world and had we had resource available we would have also had a, a French set of materials because that's another widely spoken language but we were limited. Um, this pack included a set of uh, very short and simple guidance on the concerns that had been raised by pharmacists in, in, in Rwanda and the idea was that these would be handed out by the pharmacist if they thought a particular patient needed additional information. There were some posters that could be put up around pharmacies in Rwanda and again with messages that um, we had co-designed, we'd co-developed and with illustrations that were actually, they derived from the illustrations on the rotating cubes that I showed earlier but again, working with our colleagues in Rwanda, we supplied material that would make sure that the people in the illustration um, were uh, likely were, were, were using um, clothing and hairstyles that would have been seen in Rwanda. We provided a leaflet that explained to pharmacies how they should use these materials, explaining what the card was, uh, how to give out the flyers, how to engage people with the card. Um, and then the antibiotic record card itself um, is, um, a, a rel rel is, is here with information. And I'll just show you now um, some of the things that communication design particular, particularly adds to producing this kind of thing. Um, so bottom, bottom left, for example, we thought a lot about the, um, the, the, the materiality of this, um, this card. Our original version was quite large and feedback was that it was too big and people wanted something that could be fitted into their pocket or purse or bag. So we produced a very small folded um, uh, item and on one side it has a, 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 a clear heading and illustration to capture attention a key message in large type so that everybody's aware that what the local pharmacy is doing um, an explanation of the purpose and again keeping the text short dividing it into um, chunked information so that people can understand it and see it at a glance and don't be daunt and aren't daunted by it. And then on the other side where there are four sections into which information can be put with um, regard to uh, information about the drug prescribed, that's the bit to be completed by the pharmacist in blue, and then a green bit that is for the, for the patient if they felt inclined to tell the pharmacist how long it took them to feel better and whether there were any side effects and again these the content of these cards was developed with pharmacists in Rwanda so issues that they felt were particularly relevant and would be helpful to them. Uh, this material has been put out to 20 pharmacies in Kigali this was in August um, and of the 20 to date 14 have, have responded to our, our questionnaire so we're, we're sort of currently going through that uh, data identifying messages here are some of the uh, messages that um, people have um, come up with and one of the things that we want to do now is to move forward to sort of take the project further with, with more funding. But this, uh, this project has, it's resulted in a visual identity for beat bad microbes, that's the, 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 the green and the pill and the image and I'll put a slide up in a minute. It's demonstrated the evidence and the, the willingness of local communities to get involved in this kind of work and we've been 
looking at ways of eliciting feedback and again in discussion with the pharmacists themselves they wanted us to think of ways of using whatsapp because that's what they like to use and this is where they wanted to record their um their their comments and their ideas so that was quite a challenge we now have a group of organizations and people in rwanda that are keen to work with us and there's emerging evidence that what we're doing is 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 beginning to to, to make a difference so as i say the next steps are to continue the work our, our team member manjula Hale, she's in kigali well, she's flying to kigali as i speak and she's going to be presenting our work to the Rwandan Community Pharmacists Annual Conference um, and we're just trying to, to keep to keep going with this work to do more about beat bad microbes but just to conclude and to return to communication design a lot of health communication is very basic and, and very everyday and I think it's here that good and clear typography can help um, space to articulate text, headings to structure text, simple and clear language that's developed with the people that you're trying to, to target. Um, I think clear explanation is clear to engagement and intervention. And um, I think it's continually important or important in a continued way to find out whether documents work to get feedback from people that are using these things and of course what i like to think designers can do they can add creativity innovation and visual judgment and to help to get things exactly right so that's the end of my talk um, we are I remain very interested and my whole team does in community pharmacies, but we are starting to think of extending this work into hospitals and we're doing some having some discussions with our local hospitals here and the Commonwealth Pharmacy Association is also keen to think about doing a similar project in Ghana in a in hospitals in Ghana. So I'd like to think that there'll be more things to talk about soon. So watch this space and thank you all very much for listening. Thank, thank you so much, Sue, for um, telling us about uh, beatback bugs and also beatback microbes. Um, we now have a time um, of question and answer and uh, you feel free to use the group chat box on Zoom or you could um, raise your hand and um, ask questions. Um, by unmuting your button, if you would like that instead. Um, we've got a few questions already here for you, Sue. <laughs> okay, I'll try, but you know. We're sitting next to each other in, in the same room. So, yeah. um, so Flavia um, has a question around um, the context in Rwanda. So did the pharmacists always know the infection being treated in Rwanda? Not always, no. And um, I think uh, uh, pharmacists in Rwanda were using in some cases prescriptions that would come from 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 doctors um, and uh, hospitals so so not always mm. and the next question was whether antibiotics was readily available over the counter in Rwanda yes they are so again it's very different here and the and uh, you know the the, the the sort of common name for an antibiotic is a double color um, mm. and that's a sort of red and yellow um, cap capsule, capsule. Yeah. <laughs> thank capsule. you rosemary um, a red and yellow capsule that is readily available and people go into farms and say can I have a double color please you know mm. da, 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 da. and I think um, one of the things that our pharmacy people told us is that you know they were very they they wanted to engage in conversations um, to make sure that if they were asked to sell these that it was a good reason to do so it's, it's a very complicated system in Rwanda mm. not least because um, there's a very complicated system of medical insurance and everybody has access to uh, to medicines but the people on the 
lowest incomes, they have insurance that only allows them a certain level of medication. So you wouldn't, if you were on a low income and had a certain kind of insurance, you couldn't choose the antibiotic you had. If you had a, a more, if you earned more money and had a different kind of insurance, then you'd get access to different kinds of antibiotics, often branded ones that were perceived by the community to be better antibiotics, even though they weren't really. And I'm just, that's a very lay person. Yes. Um, yeah, approach. but I think you highlighted the, the importance of understanding the context Absolutely. in which the yes. design is going to yes. be utilised. Mm. Mm. Um, Jenny has a question around whether um, you've considered using the same ideas, the same two ideas um, in GP surgeries. We'd love to do that. I think it would be a really nice thing to do. And we've had a little bit of informal interest from GPs. But again, it's, it's, it's finding ways to do that. It's you know, get, getting money, getting interest enough to be able to, to do it. But yes, there has been quite a bit of discussion about the GP surgery as a, as a, a useful place to do this kind of thing. Um, Something else around the use of um, cartoon characters versus mm -hmm. photo images in the, in the cards. Is there, was there a particular reason why mm -hmm. cartoons were used? Well, one, one of, uh, in the, in our work in Rwanda, um, I don't know if that's what you're meaning, but we, we actually did some, in one of our workshops, we did some discussion about uh, illustration, illustration styles. And we showed um, people in the workshop photographs, very cartoony pictures, pictograms, and a more stylized picture. And it was a, it was a really interesting discussion. Too cartoony wouldn't have shown that it was serious. And photographs weren't thought to be helpful because they were sort of too too realistic. Uh, there was quite a lot of support for sort of stylized um, images, um, but we haven't yet had time to test whether that would be more effective than the, the style that we used in Rwanda. And the reason we used that is because our Rwandan colleagues, when they visited us in Reading as part of the project, they really liked them. They thought they were great. But uh, one of the things that we will be finding out from our pilot study in Kigali is, is whether they were effective, appropriate or disliked, for example. Okay. Um, Andy has a question around, I suppose this is about outcome measures or measures of, mm -hmm. you know, the effect of the sort of intervention itself. Mm -hmm. So any data on the numbers of antibiotics, both in Reading and Rwanda, did they... Was any change at all? Not yet. I mean, both of the studies are very pilot mm -hmm. studies. Um, we haven't yet had um, had the opportunity or funding to be able to roll things out in a way that we can make that sort of uh, take that sort of measure. And both these projects are very much the sort of pilot pilot stage, and we're hoping to try and be able to measure whether or not this sort of approach works by. Um, trying to take account of that. Okay, I, I have a question around um, the approach, the interdisciplinarity mm. approach. Um, would you tell us a bit more about um, what kind of challenges you face um, and how you sort of overcome them when you brought together very, very different groups of people um, together to, to design something like this, like what you've presented to us? Um, well, I mean, rather than a, a challenge, I think it's a, stimul <laughs> a stimulating Sorry. thing. And I think you just learn so much from, from each other. One of the um, interesting things, I think, is, 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 is in the area of terminology, sort of mm -hmm. using the sort of similar words for the same thing or not quite understanding. I mean, I, I often find that people don't really understand 
design is or the kind of design that I'm interested in and comes back to something I said earlier a lot of people think that you know design is making something look good when actually the kind of designing that I'm interested in is the kind of it's much more process driven it's much more about finding out about how things work and why things work and it it seems to me that if you're trying to get messages across to people you've got to understand for example you know, the science behind the message and also the sort of level of literacy level of understanding of the intended audience and I think it needs cross-disciplinary discussion to find out about mm. these things I think you also in terms of approaches to research find out interesting things because one of the nice things about the IDAPS project I think was the competition mm. approach and that's not something that I would do in my discipline but our team member Flora Samuel from architecture that happens happens a lot so you know it was a nice thing to be able to bring into this project so I think it does yeah, yeah. I think one gets a lot out of listening to one another. Okay. Um, are there any more questions from um, our participants? Feel free to ask. Um, if not, I'll plug the next um, Zoom call that we have. Our next call will be on the 11th of October. Uh, with Professor Glenn Robert. He will talk about his perspective as a key collaborator in a major new international study looking at co-production. So he'll talk about exploring, enhancing and measuring the value of co-production for improving the health and well-being of citizens. Um, Matthew has kindly put on a link um, in the chat box. Um, so do sign up. Um, uh, it's it's open to anyone, um, so feel free to do that. Uh, Hillary has another question um, oh. around the types of antibiotics they are most concerned in Rwanda, and which ones are overused. I don't have the expertise mm. to be able to answer that question, um, and I don't think. Rosemary is part of the project and um, has we didn't, found yeah. that out as, mm. as, as well. But it's something I can, it, mm. I suspect it's something that will come up in, as I say, we have a team member out there at the moment and I'm pretty sure that the sort of thing will be discussed at the community pharmacists conference. Um, let me see. So Jenny um, has another question. She was saying that I was interested in the big, Figures. Mm. So it's the cartoon characters used in the UK pharmacies. In Brighton Hospital, they've used photo cutouts of members of staff mm. to advertise hand hygiene a few years ago. And so she was interested to know if uh, you knew whether which approach was better, more, more successful, I suppose. The photos or cartoon? <laughs> well, it's difficult because we haven't done a comparative <laughs> study. But what I will say is that um, we took the cartoon characters and the cubes to the Day Lewis National Conference, and we had a uh, we we sort of asked questions, and I think of the uh, of, we asked the pharmacists that attended there whether one of these solutions would be acceptable in their pharmacy and the it was about 50 50 but uh, ever so many did think that the cartoon figures or would be very relevant in their particular pharmacy and they liked the idea that they could not necessarily have all six but they could have just a couple that would be relevant to their pharmacy and they could change the message if they if they wanted to to something that was locally relevant so yeah in an ideal world one would do a, a nice little study that had a, a cartoon version and a, and a photo version but one of the things uh, uh, I think whether it's photo or whether it's a cartoon version certainly another comment in relation to the, the pharmacy in Reading was that it made people stop and think it made them sort of oh what's that <laughs> um, which is one way of getting engagement I guess Any more 
questions from the floor and please feel free to use the mic as in like to to ask directly um, as well as using the group chat whichever you feel most comfortable Um, Jenny, feel free to use uh, to to speak directly to Sue as well. So it's not just my voice. <laughs> Are you there, Jenny? Okay, um, I think it was around any messages about people getting better without having antibiotics. I, I mean, one of the things that's come across in most of the workshops that this topic always comes up and I think um, certainly the pharmacists that we, we've spoken with would are very, appear to be very willing to talk with people that visit pharmacies as to what they might be able to do if they think they've got a, a cold and whether or not they need to go to a GP to get antibiotics. And I think pharmacists would be very willing to have conversations about what perhaps what people could try to do to if they had a, symptoms of a, of a cold or a sore throat. Okay, so if we have no more questions, um, please, uh, as I mentioned previously, and Matthew has put out the, a link to sign up to our next um, Zoom video call. Um, also, um, join our special interest group. It's, it's free to join, and uh, I'm just going to put up a link here. Um, yeah, anybody can join us. Oops. Sorry, I did it to the wrong person. Yeah, so thank you so much, Sue, today for um, telling us about uh, the research, um, both in Rwanda and also in the UK, and some ideas about how we can actually use design in a more effective way um, to communicate health um, information. So thank you, everyone. And we will be putting up the recording of today's uh, talk on our Q YouTube uh, page and also um, slides from Sue today as well. Um, feel free to check out um, um, our amrpharmacy.org uh, website. It tells you more about the work that Sue is doing. Um, and also keep in touch on our SIG web page as well. Um, you can post questions and and create conversation and discussion as well. So thank you everyone for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.